So over the weekend at Smurf, I uh, finally ran into a situation where it would have been useful to have web and pocket probe operations. Now I don't mean rectangle pocket, um, I mean web and pocket. So web is, it's essentially probing a protruding feature uh, in only one axis and pocket is, is uh, probing a subtractive feature in only one axis. So the, the exact situation um, that we ran into was that we, we had a we had some dog tags uh, that we wanted to run with a drag engraver um, and the dog tag needed to go into the vise uh, and then the origin would be set to the centre between the vise jaws but the problem is, is we didn't have a probing operation to be able to probe the centre of the vise jaws really easily now that would have been really easy if we had a, a pocket Y operation in, in if you if you look at how this setup is set up um, so I've decided I'm just going to add them because they're actually relatively easy to add um, and instead of me having to do like two single surface probes and then manually split the difference the uh, pocket or the web uh, probing cycles will essentially allow you to probe an, a positive or a negative feature in one axis from two sides uh, so if I use this one, two, three block as an example, um, if I was probing on the X axis, that's across the 50.8 wide face. So I'm going to try that now. And if you look at the settings here, that's web. I haven't added pocket yet, but pockets essentially the same, just with lifting up or not lifting up instead of lifting over the, the piece. So we've got a quick mode. Um, so when that's enabled, we will only probe one point and that will be uh, in line with wherever you start the probe on the axis being probed. So here we've set the length to 50.8, so sorry, the width to 50.8. Now it's important here, the width is the distance between the, the sides of the web. So if you select X, width is the distance in X that we assume the surfaces to be apart. If I select Y, on this one, two, three block, I would expect the width to then be 76.2. It's it's a little bit confusing, but you have to get your head around that because it depends on the axis that you're that you're probing in. Um, so if I select X, I want to probe 50.8 apart. Remember that we then add a surface clearance just to make sure we're we're past the part. Uh, we've got a depth. Uh, we've got an edge clearance. Now that's disabled because quick mode is on. Uh, it, it works the same as corner clearance, but because we're not probing surfaces that form a corner, it's called edge clearance. And then we've got over travel surface clearance. So this should probe the X axis of the one, two, three block uh, from two points, two center points. Uh, it looks like it's good. I'm gonna run. Here we go, run cycle. Here we go. One probe point. And then the other pro point. Boop, boop. And that's it. And that's set only the x axis of our part there. I'm going to zero this out so you can you can see this when I run it as a as a non quick probe. So I'm going to disable quick. Um, I already have the length set to 76.2. So that's setting the the length of those long X surfaces so that we can decide where the probe point should be to counteract for angles. So this is still on the X axis up here. Run it again. Everything's all good. There's the the command is slightly different here because we've we're picking two probe points. Um, so here we go. There is one at the end of the axis, at the end of that X surface and then one at the end of the other and then up over the top and then the other two. Now you'll notice this is really similar to a rectangle block probe. It's basically half of a rectangle block probe. The only difference with rectangle block is that it looks at the midpoint of the x-axis before it decides where to probe on the on the y-axis. So that was simple. So to switch this I'm just going to go hit y and then flip these around so this should be 76.2 and this should be 50.8 
blah, 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 everything else the same. I'm going to switch into an unset workplace and then run it here. And now you can see it goes and probes this side of the one, two, three block. Simple. Now, again, pocket, single axis pocket is exactly the same as this, except we don't raise the probe and we move outwards instead of inwards. So that's it. Um, I'm thinking at this point, I'm only going to add this interface. Um, I'm not going to add the dialogue driven interfaces for this because I'm hoping that we can deprecate that approach to running. Uh, probing macros very shortly because this interface is just easier to use. Um, it, it will need some work to look good on mobile so if anyone has experience with Vue, specifically Vue 2 and mobile design and knows how to make this all look better on mobile I'd be very happy to talk to you about that. Um, otherwise hopefully I'll be bringing this feature to Millennium OS 0.5 um, along with a bunch of other changes to basically bring this user interface uh, into the forefront of being the standard for running probing macros instead of running it through the dialogue driven system. Um, dialogues will still be used for other stuff so say for example the pop-ups that you get when you run a spindle or running through the, the configuration wizard that will still be dialogues it's a lot harder to do that sort of sequential stuff in here it takes a lot more time to develop it um, but hopefully uh, this will be a good first step to getting this web interface going as a, a as the usable option for probing anyway long video sorry about that uh, cheers for listening and uh, hope that was interesting